Right, oh, guys, we're here with our helicopter pilot Steve. There Mate, what go, a right. fantastic flight out this morning. Great effort, yeah. And the bloody, the couple of loops around the island. Hopefully I had the, the go button on and get some beautiful footage of that. But, yeah. mate, you operate the helicopter out of Punsan Bay? Out of Punsan Bay, yeah. yeah. So we're here most of the season, so April through to November. Yeah. And uh, we'll run tours, custom tours, if you want custom tours, otherwise... That's what this is, yeah. Yeah, so you guys come along and book this. We're here at Nuggier Island. Yeah. Otherwise we'll run to the ship and, yeah, have, yeah. Right and have a good look around. Down yeah. the Jackie Jack Creek system, good. You're saying you've seen heaps of crocs from the air? Yeah, mate, yep. Yeah, definitely. You spot them. If they're out, they're out. Yeah. Might be lucky enough to spot one. Pick one up in a creek. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. Oh, it's good, mate. They, these are fantastic. I'm not a real keen flyer, but this is exciting being in one of these little things. And I'll tell you what, you know how to throw it around and handle it. But um, if you're a punts hand bay, you've got to do this. You've got to, even at just the basic trip, mate, is just take off from Punsan. It's only like a 10 minute yep. trip up over the tip of Australia. Fantastic trip. That's what we're doing on the way home, mate. We we're do, gonna... mate, yeah. We've got another six options too. We can go to Horn Island. Uh, everything is custom made. So yeah. Probably, so. so it depends. And, and I'll tell you what, we got a price for this, guys. And I'll tell you what, it was worth every cent. It really was. The flight out here, two hours on, on Nagi Island flight back we're not going straight to Punting you're taking us back over to the tip mate give right. us a look at the yeah. tip of Australia and then back along the beach to Punting worth every cent I reckon so, can't find a crocodile. so if you're up here guys check Steve out you'll see him hanging around the bloody corrugation bar and uh, bloody get on one of these helicopters and you'll never forget it thanks very much thanks Paul. mate good on you Cheers. thank you hey folks hope you enjoyed part four of our Cape York adventure my favorite by far Nagi Island this was the the highlight of our trip, guys, and, and Roz too. There's some fantastic stuff coming up, but Nagi was really special. It really was, and getting some fantastic comments on um, on part four of our series. Look at that beautiful little white beach down there and crystal clear water and coral reef on the eastern side of the island. When we come back camping on Nagi and next year or the year after, I'm going to get across to that part of the island. I have more time to go exploring. And I'll tell you what, I'll be bringing some snorkeling gear too, guys. Look at that. Little white beach down there. Crystal green water and coral reef. My goodness, how good would that be? And the, the waves crashing up onto the reef there. Quite rugged, the eastern side, but there's some spectacular things to explore over on there. And there's our final look at Mount Ernest which is what the island's named after, the English name of the island, Mount Ernest, 200 odd metres above sea level. And as I said, our final glimpse of Nagi, but we'll be back, guys. We'll be back and hopefully bring some family members next time and get a boat across there, get some camping gear on the island, set up on that western side and, and really explore that island. That's It's on my bucket list. I'm passionate about doing it and, and I'm going to make it happen. Anyway, Steve's got us airborne again. Where he's pointed the chopper southeast, and we're not going back to Punsan Bay. We're going to go for a flight over the tip of Australia, guys, and wait till you see it. Absolutely fantastic. Those things on the skids there, there are. If we ever have to ditch in the ocean, they inflate. They're like a giant float, and they inflate on on impact with the ocean. And hopefully, give you a couple of hours to be rescued. And um, let me tell you, that was going through my mind when I was looking out at that vast ocean there and when this tiny little Robinson R44 helicopter with 50 kilometres of ocean between Nagi and the tip of Australia, I was thinking, I'll be glad when I see land again. But I tell you what, Steve's a great pilot, guys. I, I felt confident with him behind the controls. There's our first look at some islands. Mount Adolphus Group, lying off the northeastern uh, part of the tip of Australia. Mount Adolphus Island Group and the largest island there being the Mount Adolphus. you see it again shortly. Here's our first glimpse of the Australian mainland flying directly towards the tip of Australia. Mount Adolphus there, guys, I remember a few years ago as a police officer snorkeling off Mount Adolphus Island and he got hit by a croc, of all things. Um, he survived, but uh, yeah, croc grabbed him on the head. I don't know how he got away from that, but Anyway, here we are coming up to the, the tip of Australia and Roz has got the iPad out, getting ready. She's got some fantastic still photos. And there's two little islands lying off the, the tip of Australia here. One's called York Island, which is the one you can see now on the right-hand side, the larger of the two. 
And the other one on the left there is Eberak Island. And um, there's only a couple hundred metres between the tip of Australia and those islands. There's a great aerial shot of York Island. No one lives on there. But um, some nice little beaches on there. And once again, wouldn't be good get a boat across there and go exploring on that island. I don't know if you're allowed to do that, but there it is. Look at that big crocodile lying in the water there. That's the tip of Australia, folks. You can see there, if you ever look at a map and you see the pointy bit of Queensland called Cape York, that's what you're looking at now. You're looking at the tip of Australia and York and Eberak Islands, which lie just off the tip there. Steve's bringing the chopper around. Wait till you see, he really gives us a few different angles. And it's just amazing how you, I reckon it's starting to take shape of a big crocodile line in the water there. You can see the track that leads down to the tip there and there's a sign you'll see it either next episode or the one after saying you're standing at the northernmost point of the Australian continent and that is it guys that is the tip of the best country in the world the sixth largest country in the world in area and let me tell you when you drive it it's a big country and that's the very end of it there the very north eastern end of Australia the most northern point of the Australian mainland and Steve's there is taking us, taking us out to a wider angle, taking it up to about 1,500 feet here. You see the rod holders there on the skids. You don't often see that on a helicopter. Great view of York and Eberak Island and the tip of Australia. As I said, Steve took us out wide, took us up to 1,500 feet. And um, just incredible views. Looking out to the, the west there, you can see those big white sandy beaches. And I think the second one or the third one along is... Punsan Bay, where we're actually camping at the moment. Down there on the the eastern side there is Albany Island, and you'll see that from Somerset in a, in an upcoming series. It's a, an island just off Somerset called Albany Island. Once again, what a fantastic view. Steve's bringing us around now for a another view from a, a different angle, and as I said, this flight, guys, you can do it out of Punsan Bay for about $130. It's 10 or 15 minutes, and it's one of those things you've got to do. If you're going to do something in your life, if you come up to Cape York, it's it's not something you do every time you come up, but just do it once, and you won't be sorry. Absolutely amazing. Look at that. You can see the path now, the walking track that leads down to the sign, the famous sign that everyone comes to the tip of Australia to stand at that sign, guys. And um, you'll see us do that probably in the next episode or the one after. Just an incredible... When you get there, it, it just, it's special. It really is. When you get to the tip of Australia, it, it's special. And it, it's on a lot of people's bucket lists. It really is. Met an old German guy. And um, he's 84 years old. Werner, if you're watching, mate, and his ambition, he came over to Australia when he's 10 years old, and he's on his bucket list, he said, I always wanted to stand at that sign, and he's 84 years old, and we met him, uh, we met him in Cape York, and he was on his way there, he said, it might take me hours to walk up there, but I'm going to make it, he said, it's something I've wanted to do my whole life, since I come over as a young kid from Germany, when I was 10 years old, just after the war. Anyway, absolutely fantastic. That red part on the left there is the car park where you park your car. And it's a fair sort of a walk to get down to the sign. So, you know, it, it takes a good 40 minutes or so. And here we are now, punching west. Steve takes us along the beautiful white sandy beaches off to the western side of the of the tip there. And uh, I think about now he's, he's showing us this uh, little river that goes in there and we're looking for crocodiles. He said he often sees crocodiles down there. And I remember he said on the intercom, he says, you want me to go sideways down that river? And Roz had a funny look on her face. She wasn't real keen. I'll tell you what, they know how to fly these choppers, guys. When you see Steve by himself, geez, he throws it around. And these are the type of choppers that they must have cattle and that in. And I'll tell you what, they know what they're doing. All these little inland lakes and dams or whatever you want to call them, just off the thing. And Steve says, you often see turtles and crocodiles and all that in there and we didn't see one this day but um, Steve was definitely 
keeping an eye out and going nice and slow so we could, if we did spot one, I'm sure he would have circled around so we could have got some good footage of it. But as I said, beautiful flight from, from Punsan, you come across, you do the tip, you do what we just did then, Steve takes you up and gives you a beautiful view of the tip of Australia and then flies you back along the coastline here and, you know, all these little uh, creek inlets and that, that's where the crocs hang around. And he said quite often the tourists get to see a crocodile down there and big sea turtles and things like that. As I said, unfortunately we didn't see one, but um, they're about, there's no doubt about that. What a healthy looking ecosystem, mangroves and just beautiful clear water, white sandy beaches. It's just almost untouched up here, isn't it? Look at it, it's just pristine. You can see here now we um, there's a house down there, a private house, and Steve brings us out wide so we don't go across the uh, we don't go across, you know and annoy the the private residents. That he brings us out wide now. He's swinging her around. We're back at Punsan Bay, and uh, shortly we'll be coming back into where we took off from this morning to fly out to Nagi Island, right outside the campsites, right outside the corrugation bar. That's where he parks the helicopter guys, right on the beach. So you just go up and book your flights at the, the corrugation bar or at the reception area there. Walk down on the beach and Steve takes you for a 10-15 minute flight. And let me tell you, it's worth every cent, it really is. And it's amazing, you'd be up in the up in the air and before you know it, Steve's brought it. And you're almost back down on the beach and that you don't realise how quickly you're coming down. So he's angled her into the wind. You'll see here we're coming coming into land. That's the campsites all along there. Punsan Bay. Well, I reckon my favourite camping spot in Cape York, Punsan Bay. It's absolutely beautiful. And here we are now for a beautiful safe touchdown. About 11.30 during the day. We took off just after 8. What a fantastic half a day. Absolutely amazing experience. And there she is, the Robinson R44. You get a chance, guys. Get on that thing, tell Steve Buck sent you, and he'll bloody put on a good show for you. Thanks again, Steve. You're a bloody legend, mate. Thank you very much.